What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of our Raspberry Pi tutorial series. In this part what we're going to be talking about is setting up and installing an operating system to a Raspberry Pi. There are quite a few different ways to do this if you're familiar with ISOs and mounting images and all that. You can just mount the image to the SD card and then boot the Raspberry Pi and you're all set. Uh, but the problem is that's most likely unfamiliar to a lot of you. At least it was to me when I first got started with the Raspberry Pi. And actually the Raspberry Pi was kind of my intro to a Linux based operating system in general. So a lot of things kind of being thrown at you in a really short period of time. So it's easier to start with their um, new out of box software, uh, conveniently called noobs. So uh, to let, well, that's the method that we're going to use, but you don't have to use that method if you don't want to. So um, go to raspberrypi.org. Uh, which is a pretty good website. You can get a lot of good information about the Raspberry Pi news, all that kind of stuff uh, from here. Uh, but what we're going to do is head to Downloads. And here you have uh, two, two main choices. So the main operating system people use is Raspbian. Um, but we can use noobs to download and install Raspbian. So um, if you go this method, the, the main issue is you've got to get something that will mount the image to the drive. Um, or the SD card rather, which adds kind of one extra step to the whole procedure and it's just a whole lot easier with noobs. And then should you screw something up or you just want to start from scratch with noobs, it's a lot easier. You hold shift on reboot and you reinstall an operating system. It's nice. So, um, so that's what we're going to use, but you do also have a, a few others. You've got an Ubuntu version and by the way, all these are basically specially made for the Raspberry Pis. ARM, CPU, and the architecture, all that, basically just for what the, C what the Raspberry Pi has to offer you. These are operating systems made specifically for that. Anyway, um, what we're going to use is Noobs to start. So go ahead and click on that, and that should take you here. Noobs Lite <coughs> will download quicker to your computer, but when you actually install it on the Raspberry Pi, it will take a little longer. Uh, whereas this one, this is the offline and network install, so actually the full operating system will be there for you to install it. So that's the one that we're going to go ahead and download, or that's the one I'm going to suggest you download. You can do the light version too if you want. I just suspect that you know, the Raspberry Pi, while it does have a LAN port, we're just going to use the Wi-Fi. So it should be quicker on a wired connection anyway. But download whichever one you want, and if you want to wire up your Pi, go, go for it. So go ahead and click on the download zip, that'll download that. Um, and you should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and not do it because I've already downloaded it and extracted that. But while you're waiting on the download, uh, go ahead and pause the video until the download uh, is complete. And whenever you're done, we'll continue on. So assuming that you've got it downloaded, um, you will want to extract it. I already kind of did that step. But if you need to, you can right click. Um, extract and just extract to here and that should give you a new directory and then inside that directory is a bunch of contents that we want to put onto our SD card. Now before we go and do that though we want to make sure that we um, have a, a formatted SD card. So uh, what you want to get is this SD card formatter um, and then download whichever version you need. Um, you can also like really it's just Windows that, d that really needs the SD card formatter on Mac, you can download this, but it's not absolutely essential. And then on Linux, uh, you can use Gparted and you're totally fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in now. All right, so uh, yeah, mine is drive L. You wanna definitely make sure you got the right drive there because if you have like a USB drive plugged in, that'll also be one of your drives that you can format. Um, and you, you, you don't wanna do that, most likely. <laughs> so make sure you get the right drive. Um, now what you're going to want to do, assuming you're using SD Formatter, but um, pretty much everything's going to be the same, but basically you don't want to quick, you want to full and go ahead and erase. And then size adjustment, go ahead and turn that on. So this should just totally reformat your entire drive. So we'll go ahead and hit OK and we'll hit Format. Yes. Great. Now once that's done, uh, we can go ahead and exit. We won't need this anymore. And then we're going to come over to the actual drive itself. So uh, this is the drive L. And then take the noob stuff that you downloaded and take basically all the contents there and just copy them into that drive. Might take, a, I suppose, a second. That's taking a while. I think it's only a gigabyte. I don't know why it's taking so long. Just a lot of files, I guess. Anyway, um, go ahead and do that. And then whenever that's done, 
Basically, you can unplug the SD card and we'll put it in the Raspberry Pi. We hook up the Raspberry Pi and we can start the, uh, the actual installation process. The installation process kind of takes a while, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I suppose while we wait, um, I'll point out a few things on the Raspberry Pi. Chances are you're probably familiar with them already, but uh, let's go ahead and reference that while I'm copying this over. So on the Raspberry Pi, we've got a bunch of different um, things here, but obviously the main things that I was pointing out before, you know, you've got the GPIO pins, and just in case I forget in the future, uh, let's do this. This is the way you typically will orient the pins. So the, the pins, when you look at like a pin diagram, it'll be the top right, assuming you've put the pins at the top right. Um, this obviously is your Ethernet port. These are your USB ports. This is your camera port for the official USB uh, or the official Raspberry Pi camera module, not a USB camera. Uh, this is your HDMI. That is the video in, um, unless I'm horribly mistaken, that's audio. I've never actually used the audio. That's your power. Um, I'm trying to think here. So if you, for some reason, I have a few monitors that are like new monitors. They're not super old or anything, uh, but they do not have HDMI input. Um, so what you can do if that's you, because this requires HDMI, is you can actually get DVI to HDMI or HDMI to DVI converters, just like a little thing. So basically you run the HDMI cable into that converter, it converts HDMI to DVI, and then boom, you connect that to your actual monitor, if that's something you need. Hopefully not. So anyway, um, those are just, just like a quick run through of the stuff on the Raspberry Pi. Generally, what you probably want to do is just connect everything, especially when we're doing the GPIOs. Make sure you connect everything before you connect power. When you connect power to the Raspberry Pi, that turns on the Raspberry Pi. If you shut down the Raspberry Pi, leave it connected to power, um, it will stay shut down. And then to turn it back on, there is no on-off switch. You unplug power, plug it back in, you're good to go. Okay, my files are copied over. And uh, now we're ready to plug in the SD card to the uh, Raspberry Pi, and we're ready to plug in the Raspberry Pi, boot it up, and uh, get started. So let me go ahead and put this in our Raspberry Pi. So obviously the actual you know, pins to read the SD card are on the bottom of the board, so you'd stick the SD card in uh, underside like that, stick it in, and you're good to go. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is pop over here. I've got the computer all set up with an extra keyboard from the uh, 1970s and a monitor and all that. So I'm going to hook everything up over there. So I will see you all in a moment. Okay, once you've got everything plugged in, I've got the, uh, the keyboard, mouse, and the HDMI for the monitor. Once you've done all that, you're ready to plug in the power to the Raspberry Pi. And again, once you plug in that power, uh, the Raspberry Pi should boot up and we'll get to the actual noobs installation screen. And I'm actually not sure where my mouse is, but that's okay. You actually don't need your mouse for this step. I'll have to find it soon though. Um, but you should wind up on this screen. I apologize for the recording of a screen. I promise I won't do that this whole tutorial. I just can't really record just this screen. I could use a virtual machine or something and go crazy, but this is just for like five seconds, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Anyway, go ahead and choose Raspbian. I'll hit enter and then I to install and enter yet again. And you'll begin the actual installation process for Raspbian. This will take maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here and then I'll continue once we are done here. All right, so when the operating system is done installing, you should get a little message says it's done. You'll hit enter and it will restart and you should wind up with uh, on the GUI desktop, something like that. Now in the past, the background used to be a Raspberry. I kind of miss it. You can change the background if you want, um, but we're not gonna worry about that for now. Now, uh, what we wanna do is actually update our Raspberry Pi to all the latest and greatest things. To do that, we need to connect to the internet first. Now, the Raspberry Pi um, 3 has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, which is awesome, uh, but we obviously need to connect. So uh, go ahead and connect to you, either your Wi-Fi network or connect an ethernet port or uh, ethernet cable to the port. Um, and then you can go for Wi-Fi, you can go up to the top right corner there and where it says there's no connection, basically the up and down with the black, uh, or the, uh, the red X's, click on that and choose your Wi-Fi. Um, can you guess which one's mine? So anyway, uh, once you've done that, once you're connected to the internet, you are ready to um, do the updates. Now, in most cases, in a, in a beautiful world, you can just do sudo app-get update, 
and hit enter, you'll run through that, and then upgrade. Now, in the past, that's always worked flawlessly for me. It's never been an issue, but for some reason, as I was trying to uh, get through these updates, um, it was taking way too long. So update usually take maybe, I don't know, a minute. Upgrade could take maybe five, 10 minutes sometimes, um, but this was taking infinite time, and then it was just disconnecting. So um, hopefully that won't be a problem for you, but if it is a problem for you, let me show you how to get around uh, dealing with that. Also, we're gonna remove the Wolfram engine. It's sucking up like 700 megabytes of space, which on our little um, SD cards, especially if you got an eight gigabyte or even a 16, that's a good percentage and we don't need it. So we're gonna handle for that. So first of all, the first thing I'm gonna do is mute my sound. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do is sudo nano uh, slash etc slash apt slash sources dot sources dot list. Um, for these commands, I'm going to explain and we're going to get into a little bit more depth about what's going on here. So if you're not familiar with the Linux terminal and all that, don't worry, we're going to talk about that. But first, I just want to get us all kind of updated and on the same page. So go ahead and, and what this is going to do is edit that file. So we'll hit enter and we're in the file. Uh, it's a little off my screen, but I'll just bump it down here. So uh, there's what's the contents of this file. So um, and in fact, this one almost looks like it's been changed. It used to be, um, I've, I've actually probably edited this one already. Um, so what you'll want to do normally, like if it just says archive.rasbian.org, that's probably fine. What it said before was like, it was like a mirror. And for whatever reason, that mirror was not doing well. So if it doesn't say this, what you can do is go to that, go to the two lines. It should just be two lines. Um, and then go to the Raspberry Pi part one of this tutorial series. So if you go to pythonprogramming.net, um, find the Raspberry Pi tutorial, you can just search for it. And in fact, I'll just show it real quick. Um, yep. Um, type Raspberry Pi. And here's this series that we're doing right here. Click on that. Um, big blank because the videos are being recorded right now. But um, scrolling on down, uh, this will probably actually be the uh, uh, part two actually, but coming on down after the installation, here are the commands. And basically you're gonna wanna copy this entire little bit. Just copy that, um, move that over. And over here on these two lines, do control K, K. And that just deletes the whole line. And then you can just right click and that pastes in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and control X to exit, yes to save, enter to just keep that file name. Okay, now once you've done that, what we can do is sudo uh, apt-get dist-upgrade. We'll wait for that. And then after that, we can update and upgrade, and we should have no more major issues. Um, but actually, probably after the update, actually, we'll try to do both. Um, and I'll just pause because we still will do the, uh, I'll go ahead and hit yes. The stupid Wolfram engine. I can't wait to get rid of this. We probably should have just purged it immediately. Maybe I'll pause while we wait. For whatever reason, this thing is so slow. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and purge it first. Let's see if we can get away with purging it first. Um, so instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do sudo app, oops, apt dash get purge wolfram dash engine. That's unfortunate that it <laughs> didn't make a new line, but anyway, enter. 683 megabytes will be removed. Heck yes. Let's do it. <laughs> Bye. You'll be missed. I actually don't know what the wolfram engine even is to be honest. <laughs> Raspberry Pi plus Wolfram Engine equals wasted space. Yeah, I, I still don't know. I, I don't know what the Wolfram Engine is. I'm like trying to figure out what is the Wolfram Engine. And I don't know, someone can post below. There it goes, finally, something's moving, something's happening. I'll just pause for now. I don't wanna just like sit here in silence. So I'll pause, go ahead and pause the video. And then whenever this is done removing this bloatware, uh, we'll be ready to continue. Of course, as soon as I pause, it's done. <laughs> so, okay, once we've done that, let's go ahead and um, sudo apt-get auto-remove, remove. Yes. This hopefully will go faster than that did. And then once this is all done, we're gonna sudo apt-get update, sudo apt-get upgrade, 
And then we'll be done in the next tutorial. We'll start getting into actual remotely um, accessing the Pi. I suppose I'll pause again and when this is done, we'll, we'll pick it back up. Of course, as soon as I hit pause though, it's gonna be done. It took a few more seconds. Okay, sudo apt get update. And um, I guess I'll pause on this one. This one should only take like maybe even a minute. Maybe it's almost even done. I don't know. Um, and then after this, we'll do the upgrade. The upgrade will probably take a little longer. It can take probably like five minutes or something. Maybe less. I don't know. Anyway, I'll pause and uh, continue when this is done. Okay, sure enough. Yes. Actually, I don't even know. What had just happened here? Did I... I might have just control C to out of that accidentally. Let's make sure I didn't screw that one up. I'm going to pause again, make sure I ran that correctly. Okay, then finally we're going to do a sudo apt get upgrade. And this is the one that will take a little longer. Um, it should calculate some stuff. You'll say yes or no. I'll say yes. And uh, the process will begin. This one I'm definitely going to pause and um, just carry on to the next video once this is done.